I'm here to introduce a little bit about Muggler Group. We're not... There we are. So a little bit about Muggler Group. I mean, we're, we are a group of, a group of companies um, which is dedicated to, to healthcare in the healthcare segment. Um, and I, ideally, our mission across the board is to bring innovative healthcare solutions to patients in need. Um, and we do this by uh, a, quite a unique business model. And in that business model, we have one part of our business as a CDMO, uh, which gives us the infrastructure and the value chain in order to push innovation on our own technology. So we have three medical technologies that we work with. Uh, we have focused our investment very much on what we call a um, high integration of our value chain. So we don't like to outsource. We try to do everything internally. Um, and we have five sites now um, as of this year, uh, two in Denmark and three in Sweden. Uh, and within those sites, we have around 150 employees, large patent portfolio covering all of our uh, medical technologies, as well as operating under five GMP licenses, as well as an ISO license. What that means is we can do everything from pharmaceutical development to medical device development to in vitro development as well. And why do we work in this way? We work in this way because we understand that the life science segment is huge amount of investment, very low return on that investment in a number of cases, uh, and very high risk. So when we put together Muggler Group, we were looking very much at how is it that we can generate a sustainable company that can give good growth and can support its own growth to some extent and try to de-risk the work that we are doing when we are looking at the innovation of our medical technologies. In other words, how can we do innovative products by delimiting the risk both financial as well as medical. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want to be looking at the investment market as some sort of funding tool. We rather look at the investment market as some sort of growth mechanism that we can utilize. And this has led us to a two-phase part to our business. So our business model is based on two parts. Number one, it's all about money coming in. So that's our primary focus. Where do we get money from? And that is predominantly driven from the, the CDMO part, manufacturing services, development services, laboratory services, as well as offering different types of laboratory services, uh, specialized in solid state chemistry, for example, analytic chemistry. So we're talking big projects all the way from the, from the bench all the way up through clinical and into commercial. And we're also talking about assisting those companies who just need some quick laboratory services as well. Then on top of that, we have the products that we have innovated. Uh, that we have brought to market. We have a sales team based in Berlin, um, and we push into Europe through that sales team. So that's another revenue generator for us in terms of new products into the market that we control. Uh, and then we also have a long-term royalty agreement uh, with Becton Dickinson on one of our innovations. And more recently, we have a royalty agreement with Certex Medical as well. So we're looking at all these revenues coming into the business. This is how we start our year, what's coming in. And once we know what's coming in, we look at the second part of our business. This is what we like to call the burn it part of our business. So number one is the earn it part. Number two is the burn it part. And in number two, it's where we I don't want to say waste, but we put money into development. And we all know that you know, 90% of development is going to fail at some point, or it's going to turn out to be not quite what you expected it to be. Uh, I've been married three times, and I can tell you development is like a marriage. You've got to work at it constantly, and no matter how, how well you think you're doing it, you can do it better. And that's what we try to do. So we try to move the funds that we have on the incoming revenue side, bring it into that development side, and then we look at our technologies and we say, what is the lowest hanging fruit? What's the quickest time to market? And we don't work on innovation from the inside out. We work on innovation from the outside in, meaning that we don't know what we need. So we have three expert panels of different physicians and nurses in our strategic areas that we bring in. And we talk to them about our technology. What can we do with our technology? And then we ask them, what do you need? And that is how we've developed. And that is how we've come to market with the products that we've developed is through this model. So that's, that's where the money goes. Hopefully, this leads to a really 
tangible product coming out of that. And of course, that product ends up going back and switching over to the other side. So it goes into the first part of our business model. And this is how we built the business model. And we're, we're quite proud that the business model over the last six to seven years has generated three new products. Um, one we call Embercept S, the other we call SmartPan, and then we have one which is a wound gel. All those products have been CE marked. All those products have gone through clinical. All those, con all those products are manufactured at our site. So we own these products, and we manufacture these products, and we sell these products. Uh, and all of this has been funded largely through the CDMO side of our business, through the revenue side of our business. Uh, and these are strategic areas for us. So in Embercept S, this is a, a very unique, niched area where we're doing embolization, uh, particularly in, in liver cancer uh, and into lung cancer with uh, chemo drug added. Smart Pan, this was developed in conjunction with the leading European Center of Pancreatic Surgery. Uh, it's a first-in-class product, highly patented, rolled out into the market, very well received so far. Uh, and then the wound gel has now been registered both in Europe, uh, the Middle East, and more recently, as of yesterday, into Turkey as well. So we also use the funds to expand the registration of these products into new territories. But it's not all about, it's not all about new product. Um, so we've also had a, a I wouldn't say an aggressive M&A attitude, but we've been very aware that you can have organic as well as inorganic growth. Uh, and since 2016, we've been on a, a little bit of an acquisition trail. Uh, and that acquisition trail has been driven largely by wanting to build the infrastructure into the company that we can leverage onto our medical device and our medical technologies. So 2016, we, we acquired Chemosweat, which is a manufacturing, was an old API pharmacia manufacturing site from DuPont. Uh, and we've converted that into new clean rooms to support the innovations that we've brought to market, uh, as well as to modernize that facility to offer better CDMO services. Uh, 2019, we bought a company in Germany called Magla Pharmacept. It's a sales company because we wanted a sales team to push our products. Uh, and growing a sales team organically was a lot more expensive than it was to buy it. Uh, so we bought up uh, what was then Pharmacept. And then more recently this year, we have uh, the merger with Amniotics, which is a cell-based company, also has a, a GMP manufacturing site. So we see that it has a similar business model to ours in terms of CDMO on the one side and a good cell therapy uh, platform on the other. Uh, that's expected to close in and around October this year. Uh, and then we've also purchased uh, PK Chemicals, which is in Denmark, has two major sites in Denmark. So just under 15,000 square meters of manufacturing space there, and also brings biopolymer technology into the company. So we're increasing the, the new technologies that we can work with in the company, but we're also buying in a company that has a revenue of around 120 million Danish a year. So again, Money in, interesting technology that we think we can develop. That'll be money out, hopefully into new product. Cycle will come back in, and we can grow the company in this way. So this has been the focus for us in, as my time, all right, you're standing, so I guess my time's up. So very quickly in a 10-minute snapshot, that is a little bit about Muggler Group. Uh, more importantly, it's a little bit about our approach uh, and how we deal with innovation and how we try to de-risk the, <laughs> the industry problems that occur from trying to develop these types of technologies. Wonderful. Thank you, Justin. Okay, done. <laughs> Come here. Come here. I'm scared. Are you going to slap me or kiss me? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. We'll see afterwards. Right, okay, good. Okay, Justin, we have some questions for you. Shoot. How will you ensure good integration with Amnionics and PK Biotech? Yeah, so we, we work on a business model. Internally, we call it the Muggler Matrix. Um, and this, we are a very project-based company, so everything, everything we do becomes a project. A project has a timeline and a budget, uh, and integration is one of those projects. We will also use the teams from the business to integrate directly into that. So we, we move people around the business as such. Mm. 
Okay, so this is really a, a serve. This is going to be, you know, a smash application for you. <laughs> what opportunities do you see in the field of stem cell-based therapies? Oh. Um, we, we see a huge potential in, in stem cell therapy. Uh, I think, as everyone knows, uh, we also see that there's a lot of. Uh, it's a new field, so there's a lot of risk in that. Um, and with the Dextran platform that we've just purchased. Uh, with PKC, we see a good combination of the cells in the dextran in terms of cell manufacturing. So we're using the dextran as a cell expansion carrier in order for us to get a better yield from the manufacturing of the stem cells. In terms of the clinical program there, there is a, a good existing clinical program that we will we'll maintain. Uh, and this is in the lung transplant field that we see is, is there's good opportunity there. Uh, good discussion with the European authorities and supporting us in that as well. Mm -hmm. What space is your current development project in? Do you understand that? What space is it? I guess it's strategic markets that mm -hmm. we focus on. So we're in the advanced wound care segment, uh, the niche surgical uh, like smart pan in pancreatic surgery, there's a limited number. Embercept S in the chemo embolization, there's a limited number of players in that. Uh, so we're focusing very much in those areas for our development as well. Okay, here comes the naughty. If someone is a little bit confused if you are Magla Group or Magla Chemo Swede. Hmm. Collectively, we are Magla Group. Uh, on the stock exchange, we are Magla Chemo Swede Holding. Uh, and the reason we have a, a little bit of a, a branding differentiation there is because we have branched out uh, with these acquisitions. So operationally, we have Magla Chemosweat, which is dealing predominantly with the CDMO and the small molecule segment. Uh, then we have Magla Biopolymers, which is the operating name in Denmark, because uh, we're dealing predominantly with biopolymers over there. Uh, and then Amniotics will be rebranded to Magla Biopharma. Uh, so you can see where we put all of this together, we consider this to be a muggler group as such. Do you think that as a wise strategy, communication-wise? It's an open question. It could probably be uh, more optimal. Um, we did two acquisitions in Amniotics and PKC this year. Uh, Amniotics was planned for a little bit later, uh, and PKC was planned for next year. Uh, and for various reasons, these things came forward. Um, so we, we got caught a little bit with our pants down. So uh, yeah, it, it was a bit of a quick, quick push. I'll go on. Uh, it's long-term vision to grow part one of your business model through more acquisitions in the future. We'll start with that and then we have a follow-up. The, the simple answer is yes. I mean, I think the buy and build in the CDMO segment is, is fairly well, well established. Um, if we can find the right targets that bring something into our infrastructure that we, are, we feel we are missing, uh, a lot of the time an acquisition is the quicker and cheaper way to, to add what we're missing. Mm -hmm. And the follow-up was, how big of a CDMO do you want to become? Uh, we wanna, Not huge. We want to <laughs> take over the world, um, but we realize that's a journey. Um, so it, it, for us, it is all about revenue in, sustainable growth, and by sustainable growth, that is very much about can we protect the revenue that we bring in and how long do we see that revenue for? Uh, if we see that revenue at risk for, five, for a period of five years or shorter, then it's not interesting to us. We, we're trying to build good foundations, good revenues that we can nurture, good customers that we can keep uh, in order for us to have that foundation to move into the innovation side. Justin, since you've been so good and kept your time perfectly, you will have uh, the opportunity to say something if you want to uh, tell the audience something in a minute, or else I'll let you go. So it's up to you if uh, they need to know anything more. I don't have anything else to, to say except thank you. Mm. Thank you so much, Justin. Thanks very much.